lives here welcome home yeah welcome welcome to house of love and light good morning i'm amy steinberg and you are amazing i'm here to remind you i'm here to inspire you i'm here to uplift you happy october we love this time of year new paintings behind me both about the path the journey the spiritual quest we are going up Y'all, we're going up this morning. We are changing our mind because as Wayne Dyer says, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Can I hear an amen? Thank you, Wayne. We love the teachings of Wayne Dyer, don't we? Such a pleasant, uplifting man. (laughs) Although, you know, whatever. I don't know about him personally, but I like his teachings. All right, so today we are in the flow. That's why I shared that Eddie song. And I get to see Eddie Watkins Jr. today in concert. Woo! I'm so excited. So today we're in the flow because that's the theme of the month for October, in the flow. And today we're going to talk about change. Because, you know, as the flow goes, everything shifts. Shift happens. So the shift will hit the fan and things will turn around and change all around us. Because that's how life is. And we got to go with it. We go with the flow. That's how we ca- keep our joy, our peace, our wisdom, all those higher ideals that we're aspiring toward on a spiritual path. Amen? Okay. 
Moving on. This is the mission of Hala to nourish you with spiritual food, to uplift you, make you feel good, to inspire you to be your highest and best you. And then I want to connect with you because you're of a like mind to me. If you're attracted to House of Love and Light, we're the same, right? And I want to create a good time and then explore. Ask ourselves some questions, see what we find. We're going to start with an opening chant, one of the classics, because as we talk about change, we always got to be in a good frame of mind to let change come through, yes? So I thought, you know, when we wake up with our eyes on first cause or on spirit or on um, the great I am, it's like we zoom out and any of the little minutia of the day just fades away. Good morning, Jen. Good morning, Lisa. Let me say hello to everybody's in the chat. People are rolling in. Good morning, Jenny and Amanda and Lisa. We got two Lisas here. Mitch, good morning. These beautiful, amazing people. Let's sing. Get that parasympathetic nervous system relaxed for a wonderful day ahead of us. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on spirit. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed spirit sing it with me woke up this morning with my mind stayed on spirit hallelujah 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 i'm walking and talking with my mind Good morning jennifer stayed on spirit come on walking and talking with my mind stayed on spirit yes i am walking and talking with my mind Stay on spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm singing and praying now, singing and praying with my mind. Steffi, stay on spirit, come on. Singing and praying with my mind. Hello, Laura, stay on spirit, clap it with me. Singing and praying with my mind. Stay on spirit, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One more time from the top. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on spirit. I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on spirit. Yeah. Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, Philly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 oh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. deep breath in, come on, side out, oh. <laughs> feel so good to just be present with you and to let go. Again, as we talk about change today, change happens, right? It's the only constant. We know that. And yet we want to hang on. We do. We want to hang on. And so let's, let's get into prayer. Let's get into a, a surrender space with this gorgeous Christy Snow song. I get to see her today. I surrender. Right here and now as house of love and light 
as me, as each and every person here. I declare and know a good day, a sweet day, a day of connection and unfolding, a day of enfoldment in love, a day of surrender, a day of change, a day of choice. I declare and know that each and every one of us today is prosperous and always creatively, creativity, relationships, money, everything it just flows because we're in the flow. And we say thank you, God, for this remembering. And we say thank you, God, for everything. Just thank you, God, for everything. And so it is. And we sing. at House of Love and Light. So here to light the candles is the beautiful Dorinda. I light a candle for the Eastern religions, Hinduism, Buddhism, Taoism, that teach us about harmony, karma, and the way. I light a candle for Judaism, Christianity, Islam, and Baha'i, teaching us about tradition, forgiveness, surrender, and order. I light a candle for ancient wisdom and new thought traditions, including indigenous teaching, shamanism, paganism, science of the mind, and new age spirituality, teaching us to root and expand. I light a candle for the great mystery, the eternal question, the not knowing. Namaste. Thank you so much, Dorinda. And what is calling you home? What are you grateful for today? Let's just have a moment of gratitude. Tell me, tell me in the comments what you're grateful for. I am so grateful to be going down the mountain to Charlotte today to go see Christy Snow and Renee Laboa and Eddie Watkins Jr. and my Charlotte family. I just can't wait. I'm so grateful I could cry, like literally I could cry. I'm so grateful for all the people I have met along my spiritual path. I'm so grateful for my ministerial teacher, Reverend James Mellon, who I have just already learned so much from in three weeks of ministerial class. I wanna know what you're grateful for. Put it in the comments. Let's hear from you. I wanna hear what you're grateful for today because gratitude is just everything, isn't it? It's just a wonderful tool that we can use to help us to feel good. And that's what we're doing here at House of Love and Light is we're feeling good. Sandy says, grateful for the internet. Me too. I'm so grateful for the internet. Sandy, you are going to love the TikTok tidbit today so much. I can't wait for you to see it and I can't wait to discuss it with you. So as you put your gratitude in the comments, grateful for you, Pete, house progress, fall in love, grateful for spiritual communities. Thank you guys for being in gratitude with me, my best friends who are online with me right now. Okay, I pulled a card this week because Casey is not pulling cards anymore for now. We might be able to get her back, but she's been really busy. So I pulled a card for us and it's perfect. All changes are easy to make. All my changes are easy to make. Do you have a change to make? You know, do you check yourself? In order to change my life outside, I must change inside. The moment I'm willing to change, it is amazing how the universe begins to help me. It brings me what I need. Man, there are so many people in my life right now helping me, helping me, and I'm so grateful for that. 
So we've got more gratitude, grateful for the rain, grateful for coffee, grateful for a car that runs and a toilet that flushes. Oh, thank you so much, Laura, for your kind words. And thank you guys for being here with me today. This is my absolute joy to do House of Love and Light. And each week we get a moment with Ash Ruiz, the amazing, our resident guru, that's what I call him. So let's see what he has to say about change. (laughs) Hello there, beloved. Hello, beloved Amy, oh, in the flow. And while you're in the flow, there's such a willingness for change, all kinds of change, small change, big change, dramatic change, gentle change, um, loving change, uh, uh, ruthless change, seasons change, seasons change. People change, change of seasons. Oh, remember that song? It's been so long since I found you, yet it seems like yesterday. Seasons change. <laughs> Oh, my goodness gracious. And isn't it fascinating that there's such a resistance to change? And in that resistance, it's just so innocent, you know, as we identify as these bodies and as this world and as this time. And, you know, we start relying on mind. We start relying on things that change, hoping for stability. So we try to rely on mind and we try to change mind to make it a place that we can rely on and that's stable. But of course, mind is gonna be the, 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 the ruthless, wild and free weather of perception, so beautiful. Then we try to rely on feelings, looking for for some stability. Feelings change. Then we try to rely on vibration and frequency. Oh, if I only get my right frequency and hold it for 17 seconds. And then, beloved, the invitation is to rely on what's always here, right? There's that wonderful saying about the only constant is change. (laughs) And the only evidence that there is change is in thought, right? That's the only place that there's evidence of change. It's this thought, mind's power to categorize, to describe, separate, categorize, and compare. And so then there's this concept of change. But, you know, the, what, what, what is constant and stable and here is the awareness all perception and this aware immediacy that you are right now, that you are fully right now, just stays overlooked. But not now. We can notice it right now. How do we notice it? By allowing the moment to unfold, to flourish, to be itself. And then awareness shines. Awareness shines. Yes. So speaking of shining, my musical offering today is Seasons of Love, which we've I've shared before, but Gary did this for us last year, and I wanted to share it again because Seasons, this is the biggest representation or teacher for us of change. So here's Gary Lynn Floyd singing Seasons of Change from Rent. Enjoy. Hello, House of Love and Light, Nashville, North Carolina. This is a request from Amy Steinberg. I can't wait till I can be with you in person. Love you. 525,600 minutes. 525,000 moments so dear. 525,600 minutes.
you Gary Lynn Floyd and thank you so much for creating that for us here we go in the flow change in the flow I am in the flow knowing I'm growing I am in the flow in the flow I am in the flow knowing I'm growing I am in the flow anybody else get this stuck in their head this week To the divine inside in the flow i am in the flow sing it with me knowing i'm growing i am in the flow in the flow i am in the flow knowing i'm growing i am in the flow the only constant the only constant is change nothing stays all is change it comes to pass this is from Eric Butterworth. I mean, we've all heard it from so many different ways in the Bible, from every, it's just the truth of, of existence, right? Everything is constantly changing. So what, how do we find that peace of mind, right? How do we stay in that flow? What do we do? Well, we just keep on keeping on and we try to be present in the moment in the moment right now. And like I said, seasons are just the perfect teacher. It's a perfect representation of this shifting and changing that happens. And we don't, we don't try to tape the leaves back on the tree, do we? We don't even allow them to drop away. They do it without our permission. Can you believe that? <laughs> There's something happening here and it's informing us. It's teaching us at all times, showing us how to be in this beautiful world that we live in, showing us how to be. And you know what? Where will these leaves go? Where will they go, right? It's like we're covered in leaves. I was trying to sweep off the, the I forgot I had a rake and I was using a broom to sweep off my driveway. It was hysterical. Um, AJ comes out and says, you know, you know, you have a big rake, right? 
<laughs> and a blower, by the way. But it was like, as I was doing the leaves, I was thinking so much about the journey, the process of cleaning up leaves, right? Because you're cleaning it up and then what's happening? A wind blows and a bunch more come down. But that doesn't mean you don't rake the leaves, right? That just means you keep on keeping on. You keep on and where, and then, and then I'm like, where do these leaves go? All these leaves that are created and then they just go back to where they came from, right? The energy that they came from to nourish the soil, to grow a new next spring, right? How beautiful is that to know that there is a flow going on. There is a flow all around us and all we get to do is relax and release and be in that flow. We are a part of it. We are not separate from this flow, right? We are a part of nature. You are natural. You are supernatural. Come on. In the flow, I am in the flow. Knowing I'm growing, I am in the flow. In the flow, I'm in the flow. Knowing I'm growing, I am in the flow. Changes, choices. Every moment I am making changes, choices. Every moment I am taking time to find my way back to the divine time, to find my way back to the divine inside. You know what? We fall off, right? We fall off of our, you know, serenity of our peace, of our joy. We fall off, we fall into argument or we fall into um, discord or we fall into, you know, being upset about something. But guess what? This too shall pass. This too shall pass. This is our greatest gift, right? It's all over the Bible. It came to pass, right? There, and you know, there are, he says this in the book. I love this. He says, Eric Butterworth says, there are those who might accept the thought that this too shall pass in the context of discouragement. It's discouraging, they say, he says, for it might seem to them that the good things in life are fleeting and we can only appreciate them in retrospect. However, if we get into the thought of the flow of life, we realize that what it means, this too shall pass, is that it is in working toward achievement that we gain life satisfaction not in savoring the achievement itself. In other words, come on, it's the journey, not the destination, which immediately brings up to me my favorite book. I talk about it all the time. It was the first book that we did here at House of Love and Light by Paolo Coelho, The Alchemist, which I'm going to ruin the book for you if you've never read it. It starts where it ends. The treasure that we are seeking is under the tree right in front of our house. And you go and you slay the dragons and you meet all the people and you travel all the world and you go to the valleys and you go through the hills and you go through the drama. And then you come right back where? Inside yourself. That's where it is. And Eric Butterworth says the law of life is grow or go. You know, you get to decide along the way what you're doing with, you know, you can either stay stagnant or you can let go and be roll with the changes of life. You know, speaking of being in the moment and all that, I was remembering a story from one of my great spiritual teachers. She, she was getting ready to go on a trip somewhere. She had a cruise or something like that. And, um, she was getting ready to go. And I said, are you excited? And she looked at me and she was honestly like, no, I'm just, I'm here with you right now, but you know, I I know it'll be great. And it was this idea that excitement is like future thinking. And she was so in her peace and in her serenity. She wasn't like trying to be like, no, I'm not excited. She was just like teaching me something. It was really powerful. And so in, in that idea, it's not that we don't look forward. We always look forward. We, because the best is yet to come, right? But we stay present and we don't look back. Listen, there's been so many things coming around, all these retrograde planets and all this stuff. A lot of us have been looking toward, toward our past. I had people posting pictures from my kindergarten this week. Kindergarten pictures. I should have grabbed one and put, to put it on here. But, you know, I, I'm not going to look back to kindergarten, okay? I'm not. We've all had experiences, right? Don't look back. Look forward to new experiences, Butterworth says. He says you can't go back, nor can you hold on to today. Life is filled, life is lived in a series of progressions, the good leading to the better and the better leading to the best. The best is yet to come. My friend Steffi always says that. So let's sing in the flow from the top. I'm going to re-sing everything that we have up until now. In the flow, I am in the flow, knowing I'm growing, I am in the flow, in the 
flow, I am in the flow. Knowing I'm growing, I am in the flow. Changes, choices, every moment I am making changes, choices. Every moment I am taking time to find my way back to the divine. Time to find my way back to the divine inside. I'm gonna actually cut it a bit short just because I really do want to try to get down the mountain to hear Eddie's concert. It's two hours away, so I'm kind of rushing down there, but we'll be careful. And if it's meant to be, we will get there on time. So I hope you got something out of that mini little itty bitty talk. And I love to offer you the opportunity to give. It's an opportunity. Anytime you feel fed or inspired, it's an opportunity to give back. Text love to 828-383-9889, paypal.com, paypal.me slash house of love and light or Venmo at amy-steinberg-5. So grateful for every dollar that comes into house of love and light to keep me able to, you know, pay Gary Lynn Floyd. So here is um, October. In the flow, we're at change. Oh my gosh, there's only one Sunday left in October. How did this happen? (laughs) So next week, we're going to talk about channeling, being in the channel. You know, I love this idea of channel and flow being all connected to water. You know, the water is the channel and we are the channel for God. So, you know, I'm a vessel. It's going to be about that next week. I'm looking forward to that. Um, Also, I'm going to share a few more things before I go. Here's a quick astrology with Lorelai, and then I'm just going to go straight into the TikTok, which is like my favorite TikTok in a really long time. So stick around for that, and then there'll be a tool of the week, and I'll say goodbye. So glad you're here. Hello, my brothers and sisters of the house of love and light. It's Lorelai. What an amazing sky we have now. Venus, the planet of love, is dancing closely, or I like to say cheek to cheek, with the sun. This is what we call a full Venus or the Venus star point. So this is an opportunity to come back into your heart and to love yourself back into wholeness. And how perfect is that at a time when we're coming up on the Scorpio solar eclipse new moon. This is on Tuesday, October 25th. And solar eclipses are always times of major changes, of page turners, of chapter markers. Imagine you're sitting in a closet and the light is going out bit by bit by bit, the door to the closet. The door closes, you sit in the closet for a moment in the dark, and the door opens and everything is new. So here is an opportunity to gather the fragments of your personality and to discard what no longer serves you because Scorpio is all about what has outlived its purpose, what has outlived the usefulness in your life. So this is a time to let go of old relationship issues, of areas where your heart has been shut down, and being willing to open your heart and risk that you can connect with parts of yourself that you may have not loved, that you may have judged and projected onto someone else because Scorpio being the sign of death, rebirth, and transformation, there is great power in this time that we're in. Eclipses always signify opportunities to make major shifts that affect every single area of your life. And since this solar eclipse is dancing cheek to cheek or conjunct with Venus, all the Venus areas of your life, relationships, finances, what you value, what you appreciate, what brings you pleasure. This is a time to really be willing and courageous enough to look at your shadow and to love parts of you that up until now may have felt unloved. You know, where you didn't get what you needed as a child. This is an opportunity to embrace issues of loss knowing that when there is loss, there is always deep transformation. So what I wish for myself and for all of us is that we clean out our closets, we clean out our psyche. It's like we're pressure washing the soul, you know, removing all the dead wood, all the fragments, all the debris of things that may have built up over years, patterns in relationship with yourself and with others that you're ready to be done with. So think about what am I ready to be done with in my life? What has served its purpose, but now has outlived its usefulness? 
So until we connect, I wish you blue skies, green lights, and lucky stars. I did forget to say something. I love you, Lorelai. You're so amazing. I did forget to talk about the Taming the Inner Critic. Thank you for that, Mitch. Um, so there is a, a sign-up uh, registration on the uh, in the chat here, and I will be there, and you will be there. So sign up. <laughs> okay, here is the TikTok that I have been obsessed with all week. Picture this, you get to the end of your life, you kick the bucket, and then it's all over. But then something happens, you wake up again, and you're not in heaven or hell or any other form of afterlife. You're actually in your bedroom in the year 2342. And you're not the age you were when you passed. You're actually 16, and you just finished an immersive game in a virtual world that simulates the primitive and exciting world of the 21st century. And before you scroll away thinking this is too far-fetched, what if I told you that it's not? And there are a number of scientists who have spoken openly about about how this is a very real possibility, including Elon Musk, Yuval Harari, and Neil deGrasse Tyson. You see, you need to start thinking about the level of progress we've achieved over the past 100 years, and what we could achieve in the next 100. The first video game in 1958 looked like this, and video games now look like this, and can be played completely in VR. Everything you experience is a result of electrical activity in your brain, and theoretically, it would be completely possible to manipulate that activity to experience something else entirely, and you wouldn't be able to distinguish it from your true reality. And if that's possible in the future, then who is to say it hasn't happened already. Think of it this way. There is one real physical world, but there are infinite possible virtual worlds. Mathematically speaking, the odds you find yourself in the one true real world are almost zero. And I know we like to joke about NPCs, but philosophers determined thousands of years ago there is no way to conclusively prove that anyone other than yourself is actually conscious. So it very well could be an entirely simulated world where you are the only one actually experiencing anything. Maybe not, but maybe. <laughs> That's all for this one, but as always, if this interested you and you want to see more like it, I would really appreciate if you followed along. Thank you. Mulligan.tv. Is your mind blown? Because all week I've been thinking, is this real? Is this reality? And in ministerial class this week, one of the students talked about the absurd synchronicities of life. Notice them this week. Ask yourself, are you in reality? And why did I, why did I share this one this week? Because of this idea of change, right? We are going through such incredible changes with technology, with, with things and imagine that, right? Red pill or blue pill, exactly. And are we in the matrix? Like it's an unbelievable idea, right? So tool of the week, it's an oldie but a goodie. This too shall pass. Pull it out this week when you're feeling that sense of not being in the flow. If you're feeling stuck or something comes up that's really challenging, just say to yourself, this too shall pass and be in the change of it, be in the choice of it. Changes, choices, every moment I am making changes, choices. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm gonna run down and see my buddy Eddie. I love you so much for all, thank you for all your love offerings this week. If you're watching on the rewatch, I appreciate you. I appreciate you all very, very much and I love you very, very much. Bye-bye. Right.